So today's raining and I have like 50 million projects going on at one time. I'm working on the playhouse. I also have a table that I'm redoing and I have this mailbox. I didn't make the mailbox. My wife bought the mailbox, but we had to make a new post. And then my daughter hit me blindsided. Mother's Day is in like two days. How am I supposed to keep up with that when there's a pandemic going on? I don't know. I'm honest. And I just told my wife, I forgot. And said, what do you want? So she told me what she wants. She wants a jewelry organizer. Um, a stick with hooks in it for her necklaces. Of course, you could do that. And we will do that. But... I think it's important to overcomplicate as many things as possible, so that is what we will do. We'll make two versions. We'll make a quick and easy one, and we'll make the overthought, overcomplicated, overstepped one for my wife. Ah, let's go. So the first thing I'm gonna have to do is get my stock together. Yeah, I'm sitting on a bunch of red oak and some walnut, but this piece of walnut is a little too thick and thin. So I'll have to cut it into thirds and uh, use those three to put on top. I'll cut it with a table saw and then finish it off with a hand saw. Now I'll take my red oak and uh, I'm gonna need two pieces. So I'll joint those over at the joiner on one face and one side. And then I'll run it through the planer here. And here in just a second, look at these beautiful machining skills. Oh, I totally know what I'm doing. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to joint that and edge glue it together. And this will make a solid panel. And while that glues up, we can go ahead and make the basic version. Okay, so we're going to let that glue up for a little bit. And you'll see how we'll attach the walnut strips here that we just cut up in just a second and I think you'll really like it. But for right now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a way that you can make something really crafty and really quick because what if you don't have all the tools to make all the stuff that I've made so far? What if you don't have a way to cut up or mill up, glue up things? Or, you know, what if you don't have time? Or more importantly, what if it's for someone that you don't really like, like, you know, your mother-in-law or some distant aunt that has a mustache, you know, something like that. I went and picked up some of these hooks. Um, you can go ham with these hooks, go different things. You can use doorknobs. They make a couple different varieties of hooks, some clothes hangers, whatever you want to use. So let me show you what we're going to do with these hooks and a piece of wood. So to get this started, you're going to need an angle grinder and a half gallon of gasoline. I'm just playing. All you'll need is this, some hooks, some wood, and something to decorate it with. Now, you can just go ahead and hand screw these in if you want. It takes a long time, though. If you have a hammer and something pointy, you know, a nail would be great. Hammer it in, get the hole started, and then screw in the rest. But if that doesn't work, I mean, I'm sure you have a pair of scissors. That'll start your hole out. And then, you know, from there, go ahead and screw in the hook the rest of the way. And then if that doesn't work, literally anything, such as a cutting board and a fork, can start your hole out. Give you a leg up for you to hand screw the rest in. Now I went ahead and finished off the other two because I don't have time for that, plus I have tools. But after you get them all hooked in, then you can decorate it. You can paint it if you want. For me, I just hot glued in some silk flowers. And I think that's good enough. So now we've got some cute flowers on it. Good little girl gift. And I'll probably give it to my daughter. Boom. And this took me about, I don't know. I mean, I'm filming too, but even with filming, it took me 10 minutes. I was already at Lowe's, so I mean, and 30 minutes, you could run to the store, come back, make this, you're done. So after I gave that red oak some time to dry in the clamps, I went ahead and laid out my walnut how I wanted it, which really didn't matter. And here I am applying a butt ton of glue. And my whole thought was is, is that if I have a bunch of glue and a lot of weight, I would be able to get some good uh, 
clamping pressure in the middle of the board but you'll see here in a minute how that was wrong and what I should have done is cut the red oak to the same size as all the walnut and then made three panels and glued them together because even with the weight of my dog I wasn't able to get good clamping pressure and I had a lot of voids well right here I'm taking um, this table and putting it in my driveway because I need something to clamp the piece to and also it is extremely messy as you can see and so I want to do that outside of the shop and right here I'm using an angle grinder with something called a cuts all disc and it, it's an abrasive disc you can get it at Woodcraft or online um, and I already knew the design that I wanted I knew the shape and the flow and I knew I wanted that red oak to say a little peekaboo there and pop through the walnut so I just took my time was real genteel and smooth with it and if you take your time and do it right you can get a near finish from the grinder but like I said it is really messy you can see that's where the table was in my driveway and again like I said this is straight off of the angle grinder it's pretty close to the final result but you're gonna need a lot of sanding anytime you do power grinding power carving whatever it is and so I just sand it smooth and then after I get my general shape I, I noticed all those voids and uh, so I decided to fill them all in with CA glue I just went with black CA glue it was quicker than epoxy and then I went and sanded that back and hand sanded everything up to um, a real high grit 500 something I forget what it is um, so it's as smooth as a baby's bottom the next thing is I needed to make the case and so what I did was I went inside uh, the house where I wanted it installed and measured how deep I wanted it. Uh, once I got that, uh, the only other thing I knew I wanted was I wanted hand cut dovetail joinery and drawers or storage inside. So I went ahead and ripped all the boards after I milled them to the same width and uh, then I went ahead and sharpened all my tools to do the dovetails and this is how you know something is sharp. My wife hates this by the way because I look stupid for like two weeks every time we go to the store. And here I'm using something called a marking gauge and I'm, I'm laying out how deep I need to go. And I could do this by hand, but I'm going to use that piece of acrylic there. It's called a Cat's Moses dovetail jig and lets me cheat. And that last clip, or what you're seeing now, is me using my drill press to clear out the waste. And whenever the drill press doesn't get, I use a chisel. After I go ahead and test the fit, I'm not committed to it yet. I just want to make sure my, my cuts were good. I go ahead and lay out a divider like I said I knew I wanted a drawer or some sort of storage inside so in order to have that I would need a divider and I knew I wanted a sliding dovetail connection so I set my miter fence up with a stop block and I used the table saw to hog out all that waste and that made it easier for my dovetail bit to cut through and you'll see here I just pushed and now I'm pulling and that's because I'm using the spin of the bit the correct way to avoid kickback. Um, very important. I'm saying that because I had a kickback on me during this shot and I had to learn the hard way. And that's me finessing the fit of the rail. Uh, looks like I did it in one go, but it actually took me over 30 minutes to get right. Once I did, I, I sanded the inside of the cabinet and then I hand planed the outside. Uh, I just like the look of it. Gives a better sheen than what sandpaper gives you. Here I'm applying glue, joining them together, and then cleaning them up uh, with just water and a towel. And here, all that care I, I put in that divider, I, I beat the crap out of it with this hammer. And now's the time you want to check for square. And if it's out of square like mine, uh, you can just take a big clamp put it on the two corners you need to adjust and tighten it to where you need. Now getting to the drawer that that divider is supposed to help hold, uh, I used the same material and did hand cut dovetails. I didn't show the process of making it but you can see the results right here and right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the center because I'm going to use my drill press to drill out a finger hole. I didn't want hardware 
because that would affect the depth of the drawer itself. And you can see here that thin little piece, that's because I use the drill press to go down just to where it kisses out, out the other end. And that way I don't have any tear out. And here I'm using the very high and mighty wireless charging pad to lay some stuff out. I should probably plug it in, use it sometime. And here I'm grinding out the, the ridges of the drawer. I wanted that same kind of flow on the drawer front. And I sanded it out with a uh, orbital sander and then hand sanded it the same as I did the front. And I like using those sponges. Um, you can wrap paper around it and use it for a long time. And I used a spray lacquer and, um, oh, oops, don't drop it, pick it up. Uh, the finish came out good. Now here you'll see I made a mistake here. I did these two holes inside the case and they actually belong here on the door. So I had to drill new holes and swap the hardware. So to cover up those holes, I just took a hole saw and cut out these round walnut pieces, sanded them, finished them, and they look aesthetic now. Isn't it funny? It's like Bob Ross. It's happy accident. And here I pre-drilled holes so that I could mount them directly to the studs. When I built this cabinet, I made sure that I could mount it directly to the studs that the house was built. And here it is. Man, I just squeaked, but looks good, huh? My wife loaded it up. This is just a portion of her jewelry, but um, it works great. Super cool with it. She loves it. What you guys think? My wife likes it, even though it essentially turned into a Father's Day gift because I'm late, as always. But um, that's not really important now, is it? Is it, is it babe? Is it? And it was kind of cool because she got to be part of the building process. My wife has great ideas, so there's always this urge to you know, keep things secret from her to surprise her, but then at the same time, you always want your wife's advice. This finish I absolutely love. Love the finish. You can see it's super shiny. It reminds me of a boat finish because I do believe it's the same one boats use. It's a spray lacquer and it was super easy to apply. The only thing was it was expensive. Not in the can, it's just I needed like six cans. So each can's like 10 bucks. You do the math. So I don't know if I'm gonna use it again but I like it. Uh, the way the room is positioned, my door's right there, so when you walk in, this is one of the first things you see, and which is kind of nice because right now in the age of COVID-19, uh, we can't go anywhere, so it's nice to have pretty things to look at. The other thing that I'm very happy about, at least my level of intelligence, is the way it opens and closes. I knew from the get-go I did not want a doorknob or handle, there's two magnetic catches that hold it, then you push it to close it, you push it again, and it pops out, and then you can just open it. And it just gives it kind of a fun, exciting thing the first time you walk up to it. So when my wife's friends come over and they're like, how do you open this? And you show them, you just push it. It's like magic. We like magic in the young household. Well, that about wraps it up, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys not only enjoyed the video, but maybe got a few ideas for some of the lady friends in your life. Um, if you think this video was helpful or enjoyable or you had a good time, please give us a like and subscribe for future videos. You just don't know how much that helps us out. Uh, just hitting that button. Subscribe. But. Uh, also, leave us a comment. I would love to hear from you, your thoughts or insults, I always say that, are most appreciated. Any critiques are always welcome. Please be safe. If you're a woodworker and you're watching this, please be safe out there. If you're going to attempt any of this stuff, please use good safety measures. And if you have any questions in the future, leave a comment or send me a message. I'd love to help you out with anything. Hope you guys have a good one. Talk to you soon.